Good evening, Notre Dame fans. This is Mike Singer from BlueAndGold.com with former Fighting Irish linebacker and captain, Mr. Mike Goolsby. Appreciate everyone joining us live on YouTube. And we already got a, a, a quick 20 spot from SDS123. We really appreciate the super chat. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Um, happy Festivus to all out there. We uh, appreciate you um, dropping super chat and joining with us live. Okay. Um, hit the thumbs up guys. Um, if you're listening via podcast, like I said, for the Sunday night show, we talked about the offense. I would recommend if you can press the pause on this podcast and then go watch this on YouTube. Cause it'll be a lot more, um, informative and whatnot. If you're able to, um, watch this, uh, via YouTube. Um, so you can watch the film that Mike is talking about as it is happening. But, uh, Mr. Goolsby, let's just kind of start with the defensive class overall. And I know a lot of people are very excited to hear your breakdown of this, especially considering, you know, you, you were a linebacker and, and, you know, there's a really good linebacker class, maybe the best in the country. So to start, Mike, your overall impressions about this defensive class before we break them down individually. It seems like, Mike, we touched a lot of different positions with this class, Um You've got like a nose tackle. You've got a three technique to me, and we'll get into this. Mm -hmm. You've got a defensive end. You've got a Mike linebacker. You've got a Rover. You've got a Will. I mean, you've got a safety. You've got a corner. Uh, we might have a safety that's a wide receiver. We'll get into that. So very well-rounded class. Not surprising to see um, Freeman bring these kids in. We touched on this in talking about the offensive side of the ball with the with the class. Um. The way the defense has played thus far this year has been tremendous. And it's just like, man, wait till Freeman gets a couple of his guys. So there's a few elite kids in the class. Um, and it's just really having watched Freeman's scheme. And then you see some of these kids and their some of their traits, the, uh, the body type. And by the way, Mike, we should maybe have a drinking game tonight. It's like every time I say length and or body type, we need to drink for those uh, viewers at home. But like the body types and some of the, again, the, the skill sets that these kids have, and then you can kind of just forecast plugging them into Freeman's scheme. It's going to be electric for a couple of years here to come. Well, we already got a comment from a drunk Vigo who asked what we're drinking tonight. Funny you ask. I got a Bolton Landing Brewing Company IPA. Um, uh, fans and friends of the show sent me in some beers. I only drink these when we're on the air. So Mike burned through his pretty quickly. What do you got, Mike? I've got a hazy IPA. Um, also, Mike, I thought about this when I was driving in, uh, I got to get you, do you have any, like, we got to get you like a proper beer glass, right? Like that beer you're drinking would be so much better out of a glass. It's just a quality beer. You got to drink it out of a glass. But anyways, I'm, I'm just so classy, man, with my, my just like I'm out of cans. Also, another thing I was thinking about, Mike, before we get into this, okay. you know, you and I have never actually met. No, you know, so I'm like, gosh, should I get Mike a Christmas present? I'm like, well, I've never even met the guy in the flesh, anyways, right? I, I feel so like maybe beer glasses would be for a some next... reason. You know, I, I I mess with you somehow, and you just want to, you just want to, you know, <laughs> give me a little little belly shot, <laughs> see how solid know. it is. <laughs> next Christmas, I'm getting you beer glasses. All right, sounds good, man. All right, let's start with uh, Nolan Ziegler, uh, Notre Dame's second commitment of the class. Um, he is, I'm really interested to hear what you think about him positionally. This is his senior year film, 17 minutes of it playing small ball, Michigan. I believe he, his team won, I think all four, like four uh, state titles, all of his four years of high school. So, um, tell yeah. me what you see with Nolan Ziegler. So I'm going to kind of, when we go, we go through this. I'm going to sort of go through my, uh, my notes and then we'll kind of circle back. So I said, uh, he's a longer Jack Kaiser. Okay. okay? I like that. A longer Jack Kaiser. He's got a knack for making plays. Um, he's similar to, uh, similar to Burnham in terms of like general, general measurements. I think Burner's a thick, uh, Burnham's a thicker kid in the class, but just similar type players. Um, doesn't necessarily wow me athletically, but he uh, apparently he tests well, Mike, in terms of 40, you know, measurables, things like that. Um, he has tremendous football instincts, like a really high IQ. Um, I would say, like, out of our – out of this linebacker class, um, 
like this kid has probably the best overall feel for the game in terms of blitzing, run coverage, pass coverage, and again, sort of making plays, like turning the ball over on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I put, do you remember when we saw, and this is just, these are notes, folks, that I'm taking as I'm watching their film. This is just sort of what comes to mind. I put, you know, do you remember when we saw Kaiser play safety against Navy? Sure. So I think Ziggler's a, a, a better athlete overall than Kaiser and a little bit more length. I don't think he's quite as, as stout in terms of his overall build at this point, but that'll come. I put, I imagine he'll play his way into becoming a starter in terms of Nolan Ziggler. Uh, another thing that I put, and this is interesting, and I think this may correlate with a lot of the kids, especially on the defensive ball side of the ball tonight, is like sometimes when you watch defensive players at the high school level, higher level kids like Nolan here, um, they have to tempo their speed, right, as to, so as to not like overrun plays. So you might watch Nolan Ziegler's film – and he might, again, not jump off the screen in terms of just burst and overall, like, flat out top end speed. But I think some of that is kind of plays back into what I was saying in terms of his overall, like, football awareness, football instincts, tracking a ball inside out, some of that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, but I think he's I think he's going to end up being a rover. Okay. And um, – we talked about this last night with like the running backs, Mike, and the running backs on the roster and the, and the current roster and the, the kid coming in, like they've all got kind of an inherent skill set, but they're also multiple at the same time in terms of like Tyree's speed, but he can also kind of get some, some dirty yards inside. Um, I think Ziggler's probably best asset at this point is his understanding of the pass game sure. as a wide receiver. And then when you flip it over on defense, he just seems to like, understand route combinations, gets his eyes through to a quarterback. Um, just a really heady player. Like this is the type of kid that could, you know, again, I think I imagine he'll, he'll grow into becoming a starter just because he's going to earn coaches trust really quickly. I think that much is apparent. Right. Uh, and he has enough athleticism to play sustained minutes at the next level. If you are just joining us on YouTube, Mike Singer and Mike Goolsby here breaking down Notre Dame's 10 si defensive signees in the 2022 class. I meant to start with the defensive line, but we, I, I called an audible on accident. We're, we're going with uh, Mike Goolsby's former position, uh, the linebackers. Is there something to Mike that Ziggler, you know, bleeds blue and gold? You know, like the only school he wanted to go to was Notre Dame. Like that's got to mean something in that his – chances of transferring someday are really low. So, you know, if he doesn't get on the field his first, you know, two years, or, you know, if he's not really a mainstay there, you know, you're not worried about him bolting to the portal or anything. Like, you, you've you got him for the long hauls. There's something to that that is important in Notre Dame having Nolan Ziegler. Yeah, absolutely. I think that goes back to that brotherhood, that, that program identity that Kelly kind of helped shape, Coach Kelly helped shape. Um, but you know, that part of him, Mike bleeding blue and gold, is that the fact that there's Notre Dame football in his family lineage. Right. And I think like more so than the, the bleeding blue and gold, I think that this kid's grown up with an understanding of the game and like, when we'll get into like a Jalen Sneed, for example, where he does some things physically, we are just like, God damn, like, <laughs> uh, that's impressive. Right. Just like the wow factors there. But then Ziggler might not have that kind of just God-given burst that uh, Snead has, but he makes a ton of plays. Uh, he's similar to one of the corners that we'll get into. He's like, he's a playmaker, turns the ball over. That's where I kind of, Jack Kaiser sort of sort of shown a knack for making plays. And I think Ziggler is just a real high level quality football player. Um, he'll put a little bit of, you know, put some, put a couple pounds on, but I'd, I'd say he'd be a, uh, rover type kid that coaches should probably he'll get on the field early early enough just because like he, I think he's going to gain the coach's trust the kid just understands the flow of defensive football that's the most impressive part about his game thus far to me okay so if you like Ziggler at the rover position let's move to uh Nuafe Tui Halamaka many call him uh, just junior Tui Halamaka um four-star linebacker former USC commit at one point 
signed with the Fighting Irish. Uh, we'll, we'll pop on his tape now. This one seems like a Mike linebacker all the way, Mike. Am I wrong? No, you are correct, Mike. So it's funny as a USC commit, I'm sure they sold him on the comp there. It's fun for me to come up with comps. Ray Malaluga, who I believe was a second round pick to the Bengals. Um, shoot, maybe a decade ago now, yep. time flies. Now let's, so I might have you pause some of these things, Mike. Yep. So just go back to the beginning, dude. I'm sorry. No, nope, no, nope. all good. So the very first thing, folks, that jumped out to me when I was watching his film is um, I said, you can see where kids are afraid to play against him. I, like the third play of the game, we'll get there, Mike. Um, the back runs the ball, so they just run a lead. Do you want me to roll right this now, him. Mike? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, go ahead and play it. You can just see where people don't want to get in front of him, I guess is the best way I could say it. Um, it's pretty remarkable <laughs> in terms of like just the kind of the uh, – the old school sort of intimidation factor. I think when you think of a Mike linebacker, for a lot of people, this is the um, the type of play that comes to mind. But so we'll get into like this next play here. I think the running back just runs right at him. He's got him dead to rights in the hole. In the back, yeah, back coughs the ball up. Watch this play, takes on this guard. See how the guard, the guard just gives himself up? That's a high school kid, granted, but he's afraid to make contact with Junior. Do you understand? And Junior just takes him out with his hands right here. And the guard gives himself up. He lays down. Uh, you don't see that a lot. I mean, that was the very first thing that jumped out. I was like, Good. like these kids are a little bit afraid to play with uh, play against him. He's going to be a hell of a blitzer at the college level, in yeah. particular in Freeman's scheme. We don't see, you know, watched his film a couple times today. Uh, you don't see a lot in pass coverage. There's maybe two or three clips where the offense is throwing the ball. And I think on a couple of them, he pulls up the, the quarterback. But times his blitz is really well. Um, played some depth, which is something that we'll get into with Burnham in terms of where he's starting he's, as far as the depth off the ball. Um, much better athlete, Mike, as a senior than he was as a junior. He's like cleaned up his physique a little bit. He looks just more tightly wound than he did, not as thick in the waist. Um, another, so that's, just, that's really good instincts right there. Run that back, Mike, at that last play. So we'll get into this a little bit, like with Burnham, but like you call that a reduced technique where like a linebacker's running through and like you try and teach kids to sort of take their blocking surface away by flipping their shoulders. So he's a super natural kind of flow to the ball guy uh, when it's in the box, kind of tackle to tackle. Going back to his like weight, looks like he lost a couple pounds. And this recent visit, Mike, when they had the whole class there, for that kind of photo shoot. Like if you look at Junior's thighs, like keeping his weight down as he continues to mature may be an issue. I mean, if this kid's like 230 now, rocked up as an 18 year old, and just that like that genetic profile, similar to like Prince Kali. Prince Kali, man, is like a bodybuilder. I think they, I think kids like this can look at a weight and get big <laughs> get just get bigger. So that'd oh, be geez. something to track. Um Another note I put in here plays a little high at times, and like Mike, he's literally trying to take kids' heads off. Um, it's part of that fear factor. But when you play against, say, a Kyron Williams at the college level, um, he's going to miss some tackles, and that you're opening yourself up to a, a cutback. Like a, some of those elite, elite backs will make you miss. Like kinda, how how maybe. easily coached is that out? Like you know Marcus Freeman and you know is he able to you know get him playing lower? Some of that's going to come from Coach Bayless in the weight room, Mike. And okay. that like when kids and with the first time we talked that we we watched Juniors Tui Alamaka's Junior Year film, I was talking about the same kind of thing where like right there, Mike, that's playing a little bit high. Right, where he has to kind of tackle the guy around the shoulder pads. So some of that's going to come in the weight room in terms of like him working on his hip mobility so that he can drop his weight. So you'll hear me use that term like dropping your weight. So and that's just be a little bit bound bound up in the hips, and that shows itself a couple times on film where he has to kind of run a loop in pursuit. He has to sort of has to. Uh, literally running like right there. He's too high. See that Mike run that back. It kind of looks cool, but you'll miss that tackle in college. 
right here. That's too high. See that, Mike? Yeah. I mean, if that's if that's a he's reaching. A better than a, yeah. yeah, and that's a great way, dude. I'm telling you, it's a great way to tear your labrum too. Like you, we see football players kind of wearing that strap across their bicep. Um, it's from stuff like that. So he's just got to work on. You know, if I was his trainer, really breaking down his hips. Um, which will help him to, to, again, drop that weight and play a little bit lower. But that's my critique, and we don't get to see much of him in a passing game. But that's an old-school middle linebacker, uh, has really good feet, plays with good balance. Um, and, yeah, again, I mean, there's a couple clips so I could kind of, if we get there, we could see a little bit of tightness where the change of direction isn't, Right here is a little bit of tight hips. There you go. When I was talking about running the loop, Mike, you see that? Sure. This is to me is like they call this like a you know banana pursuit where he almost the, his path turns into like a banana, the shape. Right. Not so much an angle. Yeah, not so much an angle. Like that's just a the change of direction and you, you, like that's a little the change of direction. And this is me being hypercritical because you're a linebacker. Pos- I mean, it's, it's my like, position. Right. Yeah. Um, but the kid's a beast, dude, but first and second down, he'll be, it'll be really fun to watch him come on pressures. I, I mean, um, do you, I mean, there's gotta be a reason why you're not seeing him in pass coverage. I mean, it's just, they're either taking him out or he's just not making those plays in, in pass coverage. Right. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. I don't, don't want to write him off as not being a three down linebacker, but we just don't see him. I mean, did we see one pass coverage play? This, uh, to my point, and I think I watched this a couple times now. This will be the third time where I've seen his film. And, uh, yeah, I only saw – I really think there's only – like, yeah, you don't see him get his hand on any balls in the air, any passes, anything like that. So there's always room for improvement. But a kid that's probably wired like Junior, uh, I don't imagine that he plays football to get interceptions and get his hands on passes. <laughs> like, I think he's he's definitely a downhill, you know, old-school – Mike linebacker, um, but that, yeah, I think that's a p- pretty good breakdown of him. But yeah, Ray Malaluga is my comp. Okay. And I think he'll be, uh, this kid will be a hellacious blitzer um, in Freeman scheme. That should be fun to see. Another player who's going to be really fun in Freeman scheme is uh, Jalen Sneed. Don't know if you guys um, heard about him. Um, pop on his film here in just a second. Good group with us live here. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. We're not going to be taking any questions from the YouTube comments, but if you drop us a super chat and, uh, it's above a dollar or so, you know, and it's, and it's a good thing. A uh, good question. We'll, we'll get to it, but otherwise, uh, we're trying to keep this, uh, within an hour, um, so we can get through all these guys. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's look at Jalen Sneed, uh, number 41 player in the country. Per rivals and the highest ranked recruit in, in the class, probably per any website you're reading. Um, but tell us about Jalen Sneed, Mike. Mike, go back to the beginning. Sorry. That first play? Yes, sir. Okay. So, like, folks, if you see, you know, Sneed's essentially lined up as, like, a free safety here. He's kind of apex. I mean, he's right next to the, the, the back judge, right? Number, what is he, number eight? Number three? Three. Yeah, three right here. So, the interesting part, you can go ahead and play it, Mike. Sorry. Go ahead and play it. Prince Kali, his senior year of high school in Tennessee, played the exact same position in terms of like sometimes they would walk him out and cover it. So he wasn't quite an inside linebacker in a traditional sense. It's playing four or five yards off the ball. They sort of left, let him at like eight or nine and just let him run to the ball. Um, and how lucky are, 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 is, is Snead to get to do that? Tells me how athletic he is. Coach is like, hey, man, I'm just going to let my dog eat. I'm going to cover him up and just let him go run and make plays. But it also tells me, Mike, that Sneed, and it's no real fault of his own, but he might need some time to develop in terms of learning how to diagnose an offense, like reading pullers, reading your keys, et cetera. So the further I put him away from the ball, the more time he buys himself another half a second, a second to kind of diagnose the play and then just go be an athlete. And he's played kind of a strong safety outside linebacker, defensive end, done all three. Uh, I know he played defensive end as a, as a junior. Right. This kid, like I've heard him compared to Jalen Smith, and I absolutely see it. But to me, man, he's more of like a 
he's a Jalen Smith, um, Owusu Koromoa like combo. It's like if the, it's like a love child between those two, dude. And that Jalen was more of like a downhill freak athlete, at, like as a will in high school. But Jalen, I think Jalen Sneed rather, I think he gives you more in the in the pass game than uh, Jalen Smith did at 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 this point in their high school careers, Mike. And I say that. I've seen some of the clips like you were at a couple rivals camps with Jalen Sneed, and I think you got a chance to interview him at one point. The stuff that you've seen him, you got to go kind of go digging for it. But the stuff that you see from him, like in those one on one pass coverage drills in particular, it'll make your jaw drop, folks. Yeah. Like, like it's just like and he doesn't even really know what he's doing. It's just God given ability taken over. So this is like an all SEC. Um, it's, it's almost like the, it's, Jeez. yeah, dude, I'm telling you, man, like, and this isn't stuff you can coach, like, and you'll see him drop his weight in terms of when he rounds a corner in comparison to like Tui Alamaka and the snap, um, trying to find critiques of him. Is he as tall as Burnham? No, Josh Burnham. No, no. but dude, when you're six, I mean, that's modern day football, bro. Be your six one ish linebacker with long arms like a, a Wusu Koromoa, who's having a freaking hell of a rookie year, by the way. Um, that's what you're looking for. To me, the the shorter a linebacker in with, is within reason, um, the easier it is to negotiate blocks in terms of slipping under some of these guys at the second level, and the easier it is to change direction. But this kid can do it all. Um, Mike, do you see this? Uh... Him coming off the edge here, yeah. Look, look at this. But watch, watch, yeah. Watch this bend. Look at, right? look, well, look how he, look at the timing, like the instincts, like you keep talking about, just natural. I mean, I don't know if that's taught. So, but go back. We'll, we'll, let's run this back, Mike. So this is where. Remember when, in comparison to this, is just like for anybody's watching this. When I was talking about Junior, when I was saying him running the loop, how it showed a little bit of hip stiffness. Yes. So sure. now in comparison to watch watch Jalen come down the line here and bend. So he can turn like that. You know, that's just natural fluidity. It's just a natural athlete, right? He doesn't train for that. Um, sometimes like, you know, some some kids are touched. <laughs> like this kid's a special, special kid. So yeah. he'll, he's going to have, have some time to learn. I think he could be a, a will. I think he could be a rover. I think out of the box, I feel like Kali's going to be a – your stud will Jalen Sneed can be your stud rover. There's a lot to learn at that rover position. So I feel like as he progresses, you'd see him use more so as a blitzer at this point until he starts to kind of understand route concepts and, and, and coverages and things like that. But if it's a third and obvious, almost like they kind of did with Bo Bauer, they'd done with Marist a little bit where they're just going to let him go in there and keep it simple and let them play with their hair on fire. Uh, but this is a like Emil Wagner. We were talking about the offensive lineman. Like if everything goes according to plan, I mean, this is a first round draft pick. There's unquestionably, and he seems like a sweet kid. I, you know, that interview you did with him, Mike, was like he was blown away that you know they were watching film at Notre Dame and coaches were teaching him that you know there's there's more to football than just playing the game. And you know, it was kind of funny to listen to him say that, but like that just tells me that. You know, the production that you're seeing and the plays that you're seeing, it's just the tip of the iceberg. This kid's still just playing off a raw ability. And once you can get him coached up and teach him to understand, like, down and distance and formation recognition, et cetera, watch out. Is there a better nickname for a linebacker than Nuke? Like, that's his – That's I mean, that, that's uh, that's pretty good, right? Nuke. They call him Nuke Sneed. Just nuke. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I like it. Nuke. Cause he just blows things up. <laughs> I mean, it blows things up. Yeah. Yeah. So special player, um, really special player in 30 seconds or less. Mike compare him with Kali. Um, you know, you kind of touched on this earlier cause I mean, they kind of seem cut from the same cloth. I think Kali's a little bit thicker, but Sneed's a little bit more explosive. Yeah. Kali's crazy thick. I mean, Kali's like real deep chest. Um, just he's he's more of a thumper. He's like more stoutly built. So everybody was trying to call Kali. Oh, he's going to be a rover because they saw the athleticism, right, Mike? I mean, you you were Kali rover uh, early on, and I just think it's because people see the burst and they see the ability to run. 
but Kali's just, he's more thickly built. He's just, he, Kali's going to end up being 6'1", 245 pounds. Like, you know, again, like a Devin White from LSU. That's how he's going to be built, just sideline to sideline. I think the flip side with Snead, there's more fluidity in his hips to turn and run with people as opposed to just more downhill running things. So let, to answer your question, run it back 30 seconds. Will, his job is to be covered up as in as in he's not going to take on many blockers and he can just fast flow to the ball, right? And just go see, see ball, get ball. Whereas Snead has more fluidity to turn and run and flip his hips in coverage. And again, the length, imagine Snead running the seam with a tight end. Like he puts his hand, I mean, that has to be a perfect pass for a quarterback to drop that ball in. Right. So, uh, yeah, if you can get those two coached up, man, that is like, you know, you got to come up with a nickname for those two. Like, you know, obviously, like Thunder and Lightning is lame as hell, but something to that effect. Yeah. Super right. stoked about Jalen yep. Sneed. Let's move right. on. Yep. Last linebacker to talk about Joshua Burnham. Um, how about this? He and Nolan Ziegler share the same birthday, St. Patrick's Day. Um, and that's when Burnham committed to the Fighting Irish over Michigan. So um, many Wolverines pundits thought he was going to Michigan, uh, but uh, Notre Dame got a, a big time linebacker here. So we're gonna watch his junior film. Um, there was just uh, individuals. Is that okay, Mike? Or did, or it was there? Any- yeah, I'm I'm with you. It's okay. most of it's thirty something minutes long, and most of it's yeah, it, it's long. And then um, the senior film, he did, he hasn't made a highlight tape yet. So. Um, I mean, th- this first play we'll watch here for our YouTube audience. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, whether you're watching back or watching live here. Drop a super chat. We'll get to any questions right away. Um, but, I mean, this first place him at tight end. I mean, like, or he split out a receiver, I should say. Played some tight end this year, but um, as a junior. And then, um, you know, he's more focused as a senior on offense just because he was the heart and soul of the team. So he didn't put up, like, huge defensive stats as a senior um, you know, because he was, you know, running for like 1500 yards and, you know, um, no, he's a, yeah, he's a legit, a legit quarterback. I mean, this kid could probably play quarterback at a lot of division one programs to be, you know, frank about it. Um, but obviously body type wise, he projects to play defense. So Josh Burnham was a little bit of an enigma to me, Mike, in that the first watch and I've seen again, his film three or four times. And I wasn't just, I, I wasn't blown away. I was, again, being critical of the linebacker position. And I don't want to, it's, it's tough, right? Because this kid's spending full time at quarterback at the most important position on the field. So would that affect his linebacker play? It has to. So you have to take that into consideration. I appreciate his size and short area quickness. Um, probably four, project- 15. He's a big linebacker. Yeah, two, yeah, two fifteen. But um, he's just such a good he's just such a good player overall. Like watching him play linebacker, the comp to me was Jack Lamb, a kid we signed a few years ago that people were you know super heavy. You know, he was a top ten linebacker prospect, very highly rated. Ended up transferring out, had some injuries and things, but um. That's what Josh reminds me of. You don't see a like a lot of elite high end speed. He's got great real. He's real shifty as a linebacker in terms of avoiding blocks. And we'll get there. I mean, you might have to like fast forward halfway through this, Mike. They start throwing more linebacker clips in. This is the most annoying highlight tape I think right. I've watched all year. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna, f- I'm gonna find a senior senior tape and 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 pop it that on real quick. See if we. So can... yeah, but that was like short area quickness. He's great at you know again reducing kind of slipping through blocks. Um, his high school coach had him playing at like four four yards off the ball, which I'm not a fan of just because it really muddies up the picture for him. Whereas I wish if he had an extra yard worth of depth, he'd have a better perspective in terms of be able to flow to the ball. Um, long arm kid, like we've seen Mike and I've complained about quite a bit, like Drew White misses a lot of tackles and it's not his fault, but his arms are so short, he can't wrap up. Um, so if, if Josh is going to project to probably be a Mike, um, we won't see that. You just have a, have a, a legit athlete at the Mike position, but this kid just like, he's a really good football player overall 
What a weird highlight tape, though. Yeah, right? no, I, I picked a bad game apparently because this was a. No, snow- it's fine. It's fine. This is a it's snowing fine. game, but uh, we got some linebacker clips finally. No, it's interesting though. I mean, look, you see, when you watch kids move around and try and change direction in snow, it's like it's even the same as high school kids that play on natural grass versus kids that play on field turf. They're not going to look quite as electric on natural natural grass as they will field turf. They won't look as quite as sudden. But I, I understand the ranking just because you can do so much, catch passes, throw passes, run the ball, make tackles, cover, kind of a jack of all trades. He will need to work on if he is going to project to play a mic. And it's, again, no fault of his own. He's going to have to work on using his hands, especially if, if Freeman kind of sticks with that. Using his hands to disengage from blocks. Does a good job of slipping underneath him. Like I said, the, I call it the reduced technique. So what coaches call it, kind of setting up a blocker and slipping over the top or slipping back door. Um, so like there he lets a blocker get into him. You see, no sense in having long arms if you're going to let people get into you. And that will inevitably improve. Um, but yeah, he, I think he projects to be a really athletic Mike. Um It'll be funny too here, Mike. Last the last couple of thoughts that I, I sort of written down. A lot like Ziggler in terms of I think he can pick a defense up very quickly just because he's played so much quarterback, like the yin and yang of football, as I mentioned last night. So there's two things that keep young kids off the field earlier in their career, physical development and or they don't understand the playbook, right? Right. Whereas like Sneed will be probably more just skilled and probably ready physically just because he's like, gosh, he's so athletic and put together. And Kali was the same way. Oh, jeez. But they have to learn how to play the defense, whereas I feel like Burnham will learn how to play the defense. But if he's going to play Mike, you know, he may have to develop. You may have to give him a year or so to put on 20 pounds. It's hard to play Mike at anything south of 230 pounds. That makes sense. So, sure. but the smarts, the leadership, all of that at the Mike position, getting a defense lined up, I think he'll have that in 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 surplus supply. So, real excited quick, to Mike. see what he. Well, I'm excited to see what he can turn into, like given a chance to focus on one position. Sure. Real quick, Mike. Okay, pairing yourself, and I mean quick, so we got to move on. Yeah, which sorry. which linebacker do do you, reminds you the most of you? Um, is, is there any oh, in high school? Ones? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I was good. <laughs> I was good. You were I good. Mean, I'm telling. So like, I so if 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 Burnham is six four two oh five two ten or whatever he is, like I reported to Notre Dame at two hundred thirty six pounds. You know, as a 17 year old kid. So, um, Tui Halamak is about, I think, six, two and a half, two thirty. So, size wise, you're, he's the closest to you. Yeah, but I was a better, I think I was a better athlete than him, just in terms of like, I played corner one game in high school, my senior high, you know, my senior year. So, um, but I didn't know what I was doing. I had no concept of football, but I was just a really raw athlete. So, maybe, maybe Burnham, I guess. Okay. But, you know, I was a goofball, man. I played tight end all year. I didn't know a single pass route. You know, I didn't. I never knew what I was doing. Was just all running right. around. We do have a quick super chat we want to get to um, from Josh Miller. He says, sorry about change the subject. Um, thank you um, so much for your honest opinion of Billy Shrouth. I think he needs a lot of work, and I was not impressed. Just quick thoughts on uh, Billy Shrouth. Um, I would definitely recommend people. Um, you know, listen or, or watch the, the, the offensive breakdown if you haven't yet. But just, just real quick, Mike on Shroth before we get into the defense line. Yeah, like we said, really quality player, good technique, smart. I see the appeal. But you know, it, he, like it, that, that's uh, Billy Shroth is Mike is probably an instance where somebody falling in love with the number of stars next to his name versus like really getting into the film. And like Tonona's more impressive to me, Emil Wagner's more impressive to me. That's not a knock. But I feel like some some other kids in the class should get as much uh, hoopla as as Shrouth. But yeah, really good athlete. Okay. All right. Next, we're gonna go through the defensive line, starting with Notre Dame's first commit 
uh, along the defensive line uh, in the 2022 class. Tyson Ford, believe he's a number 105 player. In the 2022 class from St. Louis, John Burroughs um, picked Notre Dame over Oklahoma, Georgia, and Missouri when he pledged the Irish earlier this year. So, Mike, what do you see on film when you watch Tyson Ford? I see a, a three technique, first of all. So, I mean, he's, he's listed as a defensive end, right, Mike? Yeah, listed as a strong side end. So that three technique is the shade just outside of the guard and between the tackle. Correct, Mike? Correct. So that's an interior offensive lineman. Depending on the front you're running, he could line up over the the nose in an over front. But, yeah, he typically plays outside shade of the guard. Um, but if he's already, Mike, 6'5", 260, Nine. I mean, that's going to be a two sixty nine. Know, be a, perfect. Okay, two seventy. This kid's going to be a freaking problem at three technique. And the cop, Mike, for me, love it is uh, Chris Chris Jones. If you've seen Chris Ooh. Jones, the defensive tackle for the Chiefs, and if the more wa- the more you can, the more you watch Tyson Ford, like the the Chris Jones comparison is almost blatantly obvious. Uh, super powerful kid. I think, I think Tyson looks at himself as an athlete. Like I kind of looked him up on Twitter, trying to find his film. And he's got like speed freak uh, in terms of the, the top of his, his, his Twitter. I think he looks at himself as an athlete, which I love to see, but this kid's got just raw power, crazy, crazy length. Um, but yeah, that this kid's inevitably going to grow into a uh, ridiculous three technique. And the film we are watching here is senior year. Um, so we will um, get to junior year film in just a minute. Um, Mike, switching over could, the AirPods. You good, oh, Yeah, you're fine. I'm just going to keep running on. So I look at him as a defensive tackle. Uh, I absolutely think that in, in a three-man front, he could play a defensive end in, in a five technique and just head up on an offensive lineman. But what's interesting, I think, innately with Tyson Ford, I think he wants to make plays. You understand? Sure. Um, and particularly, he wants to get to the quarterback. So, like, <laughs> like early on in his career, and this isn't a knock, but I feel like he could be a small liability in a run game because he's going to want to get upfield so often that he's going to create, like, bigger running lanes. Move into junior year film now, just so you know, Mike. Okay. This is a random thought, but, like, well, the longer you like you stick around football, there's like certain markers for like athleticism. Um, Tyson Ford's like looks to be on film slightly pigeon toed. Like you could see it right there, slightly pigeon toed. And it's just like if I had a kid, uh, sometimes kids that are a little bit bow legged or a little bit pigeon toed, for whatever reason, they're just athletic. They've got hmm. more bounce to them. Um, it's like kids having thin ankles. Like you see a kid with a thin ankle, you're like, oh, it's a good athlete. Um, so that's just something that kind of jumped out to me does play a little bit high at times, but just the motor and just like, I, again, just like the, the natural power that he has. Um, yeah, it's, this kid's going to be a problem. And if he's already at 270 pounds and he can keep his motor, stay humble, the sky's really the limit for this kid. Cause like I said, yeah, that's, that's the comp to me as like a, Chris Jones, just because he's so long. He's so long. I think if you're calling a defensive lineman a problem, that's uh, that's a pretty good compliment. That's a pretty good compliment. Uh, another problem in the uh, DMV area at Chantilly High School, uh, Aiden Gobira, thin, um, but he looks like another problem on film for offenses. So, um, you know, he's maybe looks a little bit longer than Tyson Ford. Um, you know, seems like he's got a frame to build, Mike, where he's, you know, probably comes in as a I weak side end. I don't care about any of that stuff. Okay. I, I'm telling you, dude, like, so you could just pause. Well, the next time you see him in a three-point stance, Mike, just go ahead and pause it for me. Like, I'm the least, and again, training high-level kids, I'm the least, okay, you can pause that. I'm the, just let me, let me talk for two seconds, dude, yep. like. I'm the least concerned with like weight for the sake of weight. Like, oh, if he's only if Aiden Gobert is only 230 pounds, he needs to be 255 before he can play. I couldn't care less. These kids are like 18 years old. Let Mother Nature do its thing over the next 
you know, 12 to 24 months. And like, and naturally they're just going to put on weight. And they're going to grow into their bodies and, and maintain and retain the athleticism that made them a big shot recruit in the first place. Okay. So situationally, I think you can play Aiden early in his career specifically because he knows how to, he has some polish in terms of his pass rush acumen, like his usage of his hands real quick, Mike, the point I wanted to make is, if you this will change once he gets to Notre Dame, but you see how long his stance is. So if you look at his hand that's on the ground to like the the, the toes of his you know the toes of his feet, that's a yard and a half. And then watch his first step and then pause it. First step and then pause it, Mike. See his first step doesn't even replace where his hand was, so he hasn't gone anywhere yet. You understand what I'm saying, Mike? Sure. Like he hasn't gotten upfield, so. I would imagine Coach Elston, once he gets him to Notre Dame, will get him to kind of condense his stance a little bit tighter of a stance and that his first step will actually gain some ground um, so he can climb on that offensive lineman. But you'll see, I think this is a move where he does a double swipe. It's perfect, yeah. So you can run that back one last time. Watch his hand usage. You don't see this often with high school kids. See, and, and pass rush is just getting your hips beyond or past the, the offensive lineman's hips. But this kid's worked on some pass rush moves, which to me allows is going to allow him to play early. Um, and he's got a motor. He and Tyson Ford just seem like these long athletes with extremely high motors. Ford's got the better size right now, but go here he is at middle linebacker. Gobira seems like he is more technically advanced. Um, Gobira also has a lot more sacks at the high school level up, and Ford I think had like four sacks in like 15 games junior and senior year. So I don't know how much you take of that, but Ford, it seems like he's a lot more of a run stopper in high school, which may even go to more of him being a three tech, but still the, both of these guys seem like the types of athletes that Mike Elston just wants big, long guys with high motors and they're athletic. I mean, that it just seems like they're, they're perfect. Mike Elston fits. Yeah. That's what we talked about last night with the offense at a certain point in time and we'll get into this this evening watch the moves here folks because he's got a great arm over and he has like a double swipe um he's fun to watch just yeah. because as like somebody that teaches or tries to teach this to kids <laughs> and even there you know nice hand placement even at oh whatever he is 225 like he understands how to use his hands and that's like the it's the number one thing it's just, it's the number one thing. And like the further you get with football from college to the NFL technique wins. And that's how a guy that's, you know, <laughs> like a guy, like they, they can play until their late thirties because their technique is flawless at that point. Right. Um, the technique wins. They're not the athlete they were, but they once were, but they're, they still have perfect technique. So I'm really excited about this kid for whatever reason. I wasn't like that stoked to watch his film. I was like, ah, I was a little bit just inherently wanting to be critical of a goal by era, but um, I'm a big fan. I came away a big fan. My comp, Mike, is um, Max Crosby, defensive end for the Oakland Raiders. Super long, not a crazy athlete. I don't think Aiden's going to beat a ton of people in like a foot race. Like just, you know, he's not like freaky athletic, but he's definitely a technician. Um I'm just trying to think. Yeah, again, I think you could plug him in early situationally in a pass rush scenario. Uh, we talked about improving his first step, switching up his stances a little bit. And I said, here, I don't care to see him bulk up so much. Okay. You know, the length and the, the again, the, the bendability, we're going to say, that's part of what makes him special. So uh, really high ceiling, I think, for Aiden. Okay. All right, moving along, uh, the third defensive line, um, signee in the Fighting Irish 2022 class, Donovan Heinish, of course, the younger brother of Kurt Heinish, who will play his final game in a Notre Dame uniform against Oklahoma State. I, I, I think this was junior film, didn't have any senior year film because you know he's already been committed. He don't care about putting film out on on huddle. Um, you listed about six two two sixty ish. Um, you know, I, I wonder, Mike, if his last name wasn't Heinish, if he would be on scholarship at Notre Dame, but 
you know, if Notre Dame feels like they know a ton about this kid because of that, and they know what they're getting, and if they're getting a Kurt Heinisch 2.0, um, I think Notre Dame takes that seven days a week. So uh, what do you think about that, Mike, and, and watching his film? He's not what we need, in my opinion, IMO, in my opinion. You, you like Again, we're talking about beating elite teams and that you want some more size on the interior lineman. That's just kind of a, uh, a given for like championship-level football. You could run that play back against the red team here, Mike. So I went into this kind of being critical that like, oh, there, maybe there's some nepotism or what have you because of who his brother is and what Kurt's done. But watch this play. Like this is a super flat back by Donovan. Uh, great use of the hands. Look at that reduce right. That's, that's perfect. Yeah, that's way, way to pause it, Mike. Yeah, you like that? So like, yeah, I love this because granted he might be like a like not quite the athlete or not just a specimen that a, a Tyson Ford is, but this dude understands football. Go back one more time, Mike. And conversely, the yin and the yang of football, watch the, 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 the right guard steps underneath himself. So that, well, it looks like he's playing against uh, Cade Madden in here. But like <laughs> oh, steps, under, steps underneath himself and then, and then Donovan takes that width step and then also takes away his blocking surface. Like Donovan's a really good football player. Uh, he, and again, he understands what he's doing. He has really good feet. I'm not saying that they're, they're like quick feet. But he has like he has good footwork. Maybe is a better way of saying it. Um, to me, is like like recruiting class wise, he's like the equivalent the equivalent of what Ashton Craig is on the offensive side of the ball. Just a tough dude, gets it. You know, you need guys on your team like that. Um, should be a really good rotational player. But uh, yeah, I would say he was. You know, he's in the same sort of vein as Aiden Gobayera in terms of like. Uh, the technique. Um, sure. So let's not discount him whatsoever. I think he understands football, understands blocking schemes. I just wish, me personally, I wish we had, I want more size. Uh, well, is, is it fair to say if Notre Dame was relying on him to be a three year, two or three year starter, then they'd be in trouble, you know, like as an every down player. But, you know, if he's a, rotational piece, you know, plays yeah, absolutely. when he snaps the game that, you know, he's got his place. Yeah. And it's, he's a little bit undersized, I guess. Oh, yeah. But is. I do think, so, I mean, like a Howard Cross is undersized, but I feel like that based off of Donovan's, like, and that was a great play there too, in terms of getting his hips around that, the blocker. But um, yeah, this, I think it's this play. So he just kind of gets his hips by. And that he's not just trying to bully people like a lot of so many of these five star high end D one recruits they just beat everybody with God given ability and size and power. Whereas like you can see Donovan work some technique. So I think that he could be a rotational guy, um, in particular in like early down situations. I need to just replay that think, one, Mike. He I think he got triple teamed here. Look at this. That's three yeah. guys on Donovan Hines right here, and he yeah. still he still gets out and and makes the tackle. See, but see, like, and he doesn't get he doesn't get moved because he plays with such a wide base. And we talked about that yesterday, like playing on the insteps of your feet, and he's, he's got real nice balance. He's a and that's where you're talking about, like, well, he's Kurt Heinish, but a better athlete. So I went into this again, sort of watching his film with an eye roll, thinking like, okay. You know, this kid's just got a scally because of who his brother is. And I came away uh, impressed, um, again, with the technique. And I think another cool factor is you figure based off of his relationship with Kurt that he might come in with a maybe a leg up in terms of understanding the, the, the defense and what Coach Elston's going to look for out of him. That's got to help him just overall in terms of his development. So. Good player. I'm excited about him. Okay. All right. Well, that wraps up the defensive line. And lastly, we've got three defensive backs to talk to. We'll try to um, get through these with some, um, you know, and, and, and stay around an hour. But, uh, you know, we're not going to sign off here just for the sake of signing off. So if you're watching live with us, we've talked through now the defensive line and linebackers for Notre Dame's 2022 class. If you're just joining us here recently, you know, replay this, check it out at the beginning. Um, to get Ghoul's Beast full thoughts. 
Uh, but we'll move to the defensive backfield. Um, a player who I think is uh, potentially going to be the sleeper of the class, um, Jaden Bellamy. I believe this is midseason tape. Um, corner or safety, um, you know, could think he could be a pretty good field safety. But he's also um, just kind of got an it factor to him where I, I think he could play corner or nickel. Um, so, Mike, uh, tell us about Jaden Bellamy. I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued to hear your thoughts. Well, dude. I don't see it. Okay. You know, and I think that you're like, well, you know, he could be a sleeper or whatever. And I think some of that's probably due to your, if you, if you self-examination, like your, your love for Angeli comes out oh. of the same program. Dude, I I'm, think there's, I think, my I think people, there's a little bit of that rubbing off on Jay. My, my sources love this kid and I, uh, you know, they know more football. No, than I, I don't, I don't, like I, I put, I mean, he's a fine player. But um, and this is I hate to say it, but I feel like he might end up moving over to the offensive side of the ball because he's I just don't see like him as a super confident defensive player. He just seemed a little bit gun shy. And I might have been watching his junior year film, but I just I wasn't blown away. I said lack of lack of burst is why he is a lower ranked recruit. He's not elite. He'll give some depth at offense and or defense. He just didn't seem I said he doesn't seem like a super confident defensive back. Won't surprise me if he winds up on offense. So, and there's plays like where it's like, man, that should have been a knockout hit and or that should have been an interception and it's neither. And I'm just like, so he's a half a step sort of late in terms of his key, like right there. It's just like, that's a fine play. It's a fine player. Don't be, don't be surprised if he winds up on offense is all I'm trying to say, but it's good to get back into Bergen Catholic and keep that hopefully, you know, kind of establish a, somewhat of a pipeline there but just seemed a little bit hesitant and just not as confident in terms of his decision making and the way he arrives in the ball half a step late could have been a pick Uh oh there's angeli there's my dude but like watch him as a receiver i feel like he looks more comfortable to me as a receiver than he does as a as a db he's call me crazy athlete. yeah no i, I like good, my yeah. receiver too and then you take into like the numbers at the wide receiver position into account. Okay. Um, and we, shoot, I mean, we've seen what they've done with Xavier Watts, moving him back and forth and back and forth. So uh, fine player. I don't think he's going to be a, a household name, but I do, I do see him getting some, some, some run at offense potentially. I do like him. I, I like that. He, he's, he's got a twitchiness about him a little bit that I, I like him, you know, just around the football, um, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll... I just want cert, like I want certitude and decisiveness and like a little bit of like shit to a defensive back. And I just didn't kind of see I, I see the athletic ability, but the lack of confidence in terms of like as a tackler and and making plays in the ball, I just didn't quite see it. Okay. You will. We'll we'll uh we'll 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 see. I, I don't know. I just I just I just that that's Maybe I should have had him as my Joe Walt of the class. I went with Angeli just because he's my favorite. But if we're talking just pure sleeper, I, I, Bellamy's my guy. And um, okay. if he's not, if he does end up not panning out, damn it, it's it's uh, Freeman's fault or somebody. It, so I'm kidding, sort of. All right, next up, uh, Benjamin Morrison. Really like this kid. So um, Bellamy's dad played in the NFL um, and uh, so did Benjamin Morris's, Morrison's dad. Uh, both uh, were defense backs, and I'm just surprised to see their son. So um, I saw Morrison in person play this fall, um, and uh, you know you'll see him at um, corner. You'll see him as a cover two safety. Uh, he's a smart, instinctual football player with some decent ball skills. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on Benjamin Morrison. Who's the best, uh, as you're teeing this up, Mike, who do you think is the best corner on Notre Dame's roster currently and or has the best NFL potential at the cornerback position, current roster? Oh, boy. Um, I, and if you can't answer, just say you can't answer. I, I, that that was a nice play right there. That was That's the game I was at. I, I guess Cam Hart for both? Correct answer. Uh, the film's not up on my end, Mike. Oh, but okay. yes. All right. Sorry. Cam Hart is the answer. So Benjamin Cam Hart's the answer and Cam Hart 
folks is still learning the the position. You know, came into ND as a wide receiver. My bad, guys. Here, it's it's rolling now. No, you're fine. Um, Benjamin Morrison, the, my comp is is Cam Hart. So the success that Cam Hart has had up to this point, and the the you know he's a draftable guy. Well, he will probably play in the NFL. A lot of that's just due to Cam's body type, um, the length and have a drink if we're counting at home i said body type but uh benjamin morrison's like that's my that's my comp this is like a modern day pete carroll you know long corner this is that play um, i was talking I, about this is uh, kyler casper 2023 big time receiver comes over and that that cover two safety and picks off a nice little hole shot uh, but yeah it can cover my... a can cover a lot of ground he's definitely more of a field corner to me than a boundary corner Agreed. yep um, I like him a lot. And again, it's just whether it's Aiden Gobaira at defensive end, Tyson Ford, Josh Burnham, Jalen Sneed, length, 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 right? Recruit the body type, you you know, as much as you recruit the specific player. Um, very, I put very physical hitter, field corner. Um, got a good knowledge of the strider. game, right? I'm sorry. He just knows the game of football. It seems like another one of those kids who just just seems well, like he confidence, gets it. Confidence, Mike. What you're talking about is confidence. Yes or yes. Yeah, that and you know, good bloodlines and coached up well from his dad. Yeah, this kid's a good player. Um, and it's really interesting too. So like you like, and we'll get into this. He, I think, I think this was the film. Seems to play like a lot of cover three corner. Yes, where he's that's bailing it, right? quite a bit. But like yep. this is. Smart player, like, and you'll get into this with Jaden Mickey, who's a, I'm a big fan of, whereas, like, uh, so we get to see him a little bit impressed. This should be good, just given his size. That, like, you know, it's great. I can't believe, Mike, how good some of these high school players have become. <laughs> it's remarkable, man, how good these kids are. So, real, real nice play here. Wow, that, I need to rewind that one for myself, because he's coming, that is, you know, he's playing cover two here. Look at him cover fight two, on perfect, the flats. Right? Nothing and then he... just continues to sink, 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 make a play. His linebacker helped him out too on that play by getting the ring back. But yeah, that he's a, he's good. So yeah, he's and again, he's a too. very, 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 very willing tackler. And I think he has enough size and will continue to, I, I hope that, you know, it's interesting where it's like you see a lot of corners get recruited and they wind up at safety. And I don't know if that's like lazy development or lazy coaching or whatever, but I really feel like this kid's long. He's got great size. I feel like he has a legitimate shot to, to stick at corner. Um, but you can see the feet, ball skills. You'd love to pick that ball. Yeah. Just saying. But All yeah, right. really, I'm really good. Uh, cool, Mike. I'm going to show you something. Sure. This guy, I don't know if you can see the my cursor on the screen. That was me right there filming this game from the. <laughs> I, I was, this is the one I was at. And I, was I thought at I saw you up there. I thought I saw that goatee up there. <laughs> there he is. So, <laughs> but no, it was it was a really good game. The Casper kid caught two touchdowns and fades in the goal line against Morrison. I mean, obviously those aren't going to show up here, but um, they had it was a fun battle between those two high level players. So this is again, I I, I put. A long strider, and I think that he's got really good, like, hop and long speed. So just, again, coming up physically in the run game. Whereas the next kid that we'll talk about, presumably Jaden Mickey, is definitely more of a boundary corner, um, quicker than fast. But I think that this kid, when we talk about, you know, covering the Alabama receivers of the world, he's got a shot just because he does have a long stride and really good top end speed. All right. Well, you mentioned Mickey, so let's uh, let, let's go ahead and watch him after this last play here of uh, Mr. Morrison. Got a score. Um. So Mickey, you mentioned um as a um. Oh, that was a nice tackle there in the in, in the red zone. Uh, you mentioned you like him at the boundary. That's interesting. You know, he's you know I don't think body type wise he's your typical boundary. You know, at about 5'11", 175 pounds. I believe this first place him on a kickoff return. But, um, you know. Well, how do you so how, so how do you see that, Mike? Do you see your field corner as a bigger guy or a smaller guy? Field corner, 
As yeah, or, I mean, or, I think same question. Boundary I would corners. answer yeah, boundary, boundary, corners, boundary, big guy or, boundary or to match up against the bigger receivers, right? I mean, they're going to throw Kevin Austin in the boundary, so I, you know, that kind of bigger receiver. That's where I'd want my bigger corner. I I I go more off of traits than I do, I guess, the body type, and that like. So like, go run this back, Mike. That last so, play, like, Mickey. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mickey, Jade Mickey is, I wrote this down as I'm watching his film. He's quick as shit. Like, he is quick. You'll see it. But, like, watch the the top end speed here on a kick return. Like, the knee drive starts to fall off. Um, I don't think he's as fast as he needs to be to play field corner. So, like, I look at traits, whereas I feel like Benjamin can run with people to the field. Um, but I do feel like Mickey's a little bit quicker in terms of I like like him his in the, ability to play. I feel like I like him more in nickel. You could be a nickel. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up, I mean, I grew up like the first boundary and field corner that I ever like sort of had the experience of understanding and dealing with was Shane Walton and Vontez Duff, who Notre Dame fans remember. We had that great defense in 2002. Vontez Duff was a legit four three four forty guy and he played field corner. And Shane Walton was probably like a four seven forty guy, but just had tremendous feet. Really smart player. Got a, got a, his hands on a ton of balls, and that's more like what I see with Mickey. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a child. Continue, Mike. Yeah. Um. Well, I got his hands on a lot of passes. <laughs> Sorry. I remember my first beer, Mike. <laughs> so. I'm a big fan of once we get past this, this return stuff and all, oh, this is another note I wrote Uh second note that I put, I put a star, finally a punt returner. That's not a, a walk on. All right. So, we, we do have to find uh, some. Yeah. It, I think this might be the last one. Okay. This all kid's right. a playmaker, dude. I'm telling you, man, he is a playmaker. I'm a fan of his. Right. You see that? Like, I, I love him, love him, but like, doesn't he just look small out there? Like, that's you, fine. Okay, that's yeah, but I mean, so if he's five ten, I mean, what do you you know? There's, but what what I want you to focus on that's kind of a giveaway. The the short area quickness. There's a couple plays where he comes up, where he's sort of drifting in coverage, and he and he comes up to make a play on a ball. And it's this, like, by light. the way, is him uh, against uh, C.J. Williams. Uh, who was committed to Notre Dame for a while, then flipped to USC. Uh, I don't think we'll miss him, by the he way. He hasn't flipped to USC officially, but, you know, it's what we think, at least. Makes a good play. Makes a good play. I, I wasn't – I think C.J. Williams is propped up. Now, watch the quickness here. Uh, it's not the, that's not the play I'm talking about, but I think C.J. Williams propped up by recruiting-wise, rankings-wise, playing for modern day, the number one program in the country, but – I'm a big fan of Mickey. I just am. He's, I think he's a, a a competitive dude. Really understands the game. When we get into like the kind of the meat of his cover, like right there. Go back, Mike. Play that play again. Got it. This one right this here. Is qu- I mean, this is quick. Like this is very quick. Watch this. Bam. Yeah. You know, like that's understanding the game. You'll see sometimes when he's in coverage, he's reading through three, two, one. Like he's got his eyes on the quarterback. Bam, right? I I really like this kid, whether he's a little bit undersized or not. Keep going. There's one play in here where he Yeah, I mean if he's 6-1, I think he's a five-star. <laughs> like, I, you know, like I I really do. Just he really a... well really like this is the play. Bam, like he just you know, he just he sees it. I keep people are going to make fun of me. I keep saying bam, but uh, there's a play in, the, in, the, in this in this film where it's third and three, and he lets his guy go, and he breaks on two because he understands down a distance, and like he's just a playmaker to me. Big fan of him, just because with just with the quickness and the awareness and the. That was the targeting call. That looked like a good hit to me. I remember when that that happened, but uh. So yeah, I, I really like this kid. Lightning quick, exceptional ball skills in terms of like completing the catch and coming down with an actual interception versus, you know, a knockdown. This is him understanding leverage. 
forcing a ball back inside. Where is that play? Yeah, we got about a minute left of. Yeah. Anyways, minute left. So of we'll get to it. That might have been it. Yeah, he's gonna be. A, I think he'll be a nice player because again, we want we want to create. Tar this is the one. Wow. What coverage right? is that? So go back. So go back. So I, I watched that clip three times. I'm not sure of the coverage. I think it's cover three. So pause it. I think it's cover three because you, the, the, you know, the corner closest to us is sinking. He's leaving we'll at, his man already. The ball just was snapped. Because look at the down and distance. Look at the markers. It's third and three. Yeah. So watch this. Third and three, I'm going to go make a freaking play. I love it. Oh, man. Look at this. You know, it's a playmaker. Yeah, he had this safety help over here, so he could. He could but that of... could be film study. I mean, just stuff like that at the high school level, Mike, is really rare. So I like, I like both. I like both of these corners, and we'll see about Bellamy. Uh, but Morrison's a field corner. Like I said, we talked about. You asked first, asked me about the defensive class. It feels like we've got. Somebody for each little role. You've got a boundary corner, in my estimation. You got a field corner. You got a mic. You got a whale. You got a rover. No you safety. Three technique. You got a defensive end. You got an, in, you know, no safety. No safety. Devin Moore would have been very nice to have in this class because uh, I don't know if you you've seen his tape, Mike. Uh, decommitted from Notre Dame. Uh, I have not. No. News. Uh, he was uh, six three. Next coming to Kyle Hamilton, I swear. Um, but uh, so that was a huge loss. But. All right, we're uh, over an hour, Mike. Any uh, closing thoughts uh, on this 2022 class as we uh, wrap this thing up? No. I want to 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 stud I want a stud quarterback and we want talent at the edges. Um who's the receiver, Mike? Our one receiver we signed. Merriweather. Merriweather. I really like Merriweather, so I'm happy. You know, we want numbers, and I'm really happy with our corner talent that we've signed on on the edges in in, in particular. And uh, just yeah, closing closing thoughts is like kudos to you, dude, because I know you've worked your ass off the last couple of weeks, and I think that uh, blue and gold nation certainly takes you for granted. I don't, so I just wanted to tip my tip my hat to you, buddy. All right, well, I appreciate it. Not the the recruiting insight that I was hoping for, but I'll I will take a pat on the back always. So sometimes we need them, man. All right. Well, Mike, uh, great analysis as always. It's uh, not easy to come on here and talk for an hour. <laughs> you know, looking at your your phone that you're uh, you're streaming this. Speak thing for on. yourself, dude. <laughs> What's that? Speak for yourself. I said you said it's not easy to talk for an hour. I said speak for yourself. <laughs> All righty. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, hit the thumbs up before you get out of here. Podcast listeners, we appreciate you as well. Uh, everybody, make sure you go to blueandgold.com. Sign up for our free newsletter to stay um, you know, up to date with what's going on. we got some exciting site news. Let me check my calendar. Um, in about you know, less than two weeks, about 12 days or so, we've got some good stuff coming to our site. So make sure you lock in at blueandgold.com. We will catch you guys next time.